stop doing everything at a thousand miles a minute. Hi everybody, it's me again. So I know I said it was gonna be like a weekly thing and I know I'm probably gonna want something. I don't think it's been a week. Either way, there's an important reason for it. So we're gonna jump into it. So it's OCD. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that. Why? Again, it's something that I happen to have. And today there happens to be like something where it kicks in. And yes, there is a little bit of saltiness here towards, you know, social development and all that whatnot. I don't know. There's people helping me out. We'll get there. But again, for reasons that weren't my fault, I went over my allowed money. Because I don't have a minimum wage job, because they can't find me one. I'm eligible for vacation pay, which I got, and I get a bonus for referring a friend. That's not something they can count on every month, but apparently, according to them, that don't matter. And again, the disability designation is it can you work enough money to support yourself? Because let's face it, in this day and age, most of us can't anyway, even if you're not on disability. But the disability designation means that you have either physical or mental illnesses or conditions that prevent you from doing everyday things. Now, for some of you who did see the, the last little quick thing with Megan when I was in the stores. So going into stores by myself is not something that I can do. Could I do it before? No. I mean, I had to. I was forced to or I would starve to death. But, the, you know, there was a time back when I was trying to work, I would go do my groceries at Sobeys uh, in the mall because they were open 24 hours. So it was like 2 o'clock in the morning when there was nobody there. So today we're going to talk about OCD and when is that actually a problem? Because most of us actually have a touch of it and that's completely normal. So OCD as we all most probably know, means obsessive compulsive disorder. And most people think that the compulsion is the problem. Actually, it's the obsessiveness that's the problem. And I have answered this actual same question on my Quora account, and I will link the answer, yeah, the an my answer to that question. <clears throat> That was confusing. I will link my answer to that question on Quora in the description. For those of you who don't know what Quora is, um, I'm saying check it out. It, it's great. For me, it's a great way to talk about what I want to say. It's not Facebook. There's no sugarcoating everything. It's an international platform where people ask questions, questions are, are answered. There's various topics, pretty much anything's a go. You sign up for the ones that you're interested in and whatnot. When it comes to being able to answer a question, your credentials can simply be that, you know, you've lived through it. So on this platform, Justin Trudeau, whether you like him or not, it's on the point. Barack Obama, same thing, whether you like him or not, it's on the point. They are still held in esteem. They have accounts on there and they answer questions. So it's not like a little teeny weeny thing. So I'm only mentioning the Quora. One, because I've answered this exact question in there. But why I think it's particularly relevant is that it is a respected platform all around the world. And somehow this year, I, I didn't believe it at first when I got the message, but I was named one of the top writers for 2018. And there's a lot of people on there, and I don't know how I managed it. 
Um, I'm super happy about it, and I'm proud of myself. I mean, I'm I'm standing out amongst you know all those other people out there. So why not link it in there? Okay, compulsions. What's a compulsion? Because everybody has them. We all do, and they're not necessarily a bad thing. They're a bad thing when they're life altering, when they take over your life and they take too much of your time. But we all have those little things inside of us and some of us can laugh at it because we think it's kind of funny. Are you the type of person that has to put the, the cap back on the toothpaste when you're done brushing your teeth or need to close all the bottles of shampoo in the shower? And that's, a, you know, so for some people, that's a deal breaker in relationships. So, you know, but just because those things happen to be in your life where you're the type of person that, okay, I have to say this because I'm not the only one. I thought I was for a very long time. We all know that we have a favorite fork. All right, let's just go there. We all know we have a favorite fork. That's a compulsion. But it's not life altering. It doesn't mean that you cannot eat anything if you can't find your favorite fork. It just means you prefer it that way. So first we're going to go with the definition of a compulsion. So a compulsion is an irrational thought that things are not okay. Favorite fork, for example. You might feel that first weird feeling in your tummy that you're not eating with your favorite fork. Now, most people who don't suffer from, you know, OCD as an actual life-altering thing will be able to still eat their meal and, you know, it wasn't as enjoyable, but they were still able to eat their meal and move on with their day. And that feeling that things are not okay comes from the part of your brain that has the fight or flight part, you know, that goes to the reptilian brain from way back when. And they now know through series of tests and stuff because they've been testing people for a long time that the root of anxiety because OCD is a form of anxiety or anxiety comes from OCD I'm not sure don't quote me on that and yes my window is open because it's hot in here when I started this whole video because at the end of this I'm gonna put in the makeup stuff because I'm um, yeah I'm gonna throw a little shade on social development I probably shouldn't, but I'm doing it anyway because I'm a little ticked off. So that was all, you know, sunshiny. But now the sun's like somewhere's over there. But it's still really hot in here, so the windows are open. It's an old building. We don't have air conditioning. But that's okay. It's my house. It works. No complaints. So the fight or flight part in your brain is deep-rooted inside. And like I said, there are... A lot of experiments and there's some experimental therapy going on if I can find the link I will link underneath here it was a David Suzuki episode because he has the nature of things on CBC and yeah I grew up watching documentaries with my mom because my mom's an intelligent person and we like watching those things but they had one about anorexia and how they're trying to help people and these, these people that were helped were like at the brink of death because unfortunately, you know, it's a mental illness and they can't help themselves. And it's called deep brain stimulation. So they really like cut your head open and shove some electrodes into the part of their brain. And I'm doing this because it's somewhere like in the middle. And there's a little pacemaker that they put in your chest. And it sends these electrical signals to your brain so that you don't overthink. It just subsidizes, you know, it puts down the anxiety. That's still in the test phases. From everything that I know, results are so far good. But, I mean, that's a seriously invasive thing. And you really, really need, you know, to be severely affected to want to go that far. But. So what does obsessive part mean? Why 
is it the problem? It's because those irrational thoughts that are the compulsion become irrational fears. And those fears usually revolve around the person who has OCD, so me, that either I am or will be in a life-threatening position or situation. Or that someone I love, like my mother, my father, my sister, will end up in a life-threatening situation. The irrational fears are exactly that, irrational. They don't make sense. And what is so tough for people that have OCD is that we know it. We know that that fear, that thought that we have probably isn't going to, you know, we can't put the probably part in there. We, we know, but then we don't know. So we have to do it. So for yes, most of you out there who think of OCD, think of the people that wash their hands five times in a row or turn the light on, you know, eight times and turn the knob eight times or whatever. Yes, that's definitely a problem and that, that's a, a big part of OCD. But it can also be in a different thing. And that's where I fall in and that's why I'm talking about it today. Because today my OCD is 100%. And that other part is that I have the obsessive part thing. As in the irrational fear that I might die or end up in a life-threatening situation. It's obsessive because the thought keeps going in my mind, but I'm not doing an activity obsessively. And there's other people like this in the world, not just me. <clears throat> but again, I'm here to try to explain these things to people because you know what? People don't know. All you, you know is what you see on TV. Don't believe everything you see on TV and don't believe everything you read on the internet. Most of it's not true. So why is this such a problem if I'm not, you know, doing things over and over again? Why do you, why would it affect my life? Why would it stop me from doing normal things? Well, one, I just let you know that I have an alarm because there's a cab come and pick me up to go to group today. And if the alarm goes off, that means the cab is going to be here in 10 minutes. So I got to shut up. So I might get, I might have to cut this short. Finish it when I get back. So yes, I have a DBT group today. I have to go downtown to the mental health. Now, my part of my OCD things is that I have to do everything the same way. And I'm not the only person. There's, other, there's many other people out there. And they suffer from this and a lot of people suffer in silence. So again, bringing it out there. Ask for help. Talk to somebody. For some people, they have to have the same route streetwise to get from point A to point B. So either from home to work or to the grocery store or to a friend's or to the mother's, whatever. They always have to take the same route. Now, usually you would think it's because they don't want to get lost. Well, for us, because when I drove, that was one of my things. <clears throat> for us, I'm panicking thinking about it. For us, getting lost feels like a life or death situation. I have gotten lost before, by the way, in Moncton. So anybody who knows Moncton, you're all going to think like, what? How can you get lost? I got lost twice. The first time was with my first car when the transmission cracked in half. And I had no idea where I was. That was... Don't go there. The second time was when I had bought my car. Because, yeah, I was... Before all this, I had a life. Like, I bought my dream car. I was doing very well. This isn't a choice, okay? People from social development. Sorry. I had a car. I decided, you know what? I'm going to go for a drive. 
I know it was up the Hildegard part or something like that. Those subdivisions. I couldn't find my way back. And now, because we know about the probably high-functioning autistic part there, probably explain... Ex Probably explains why looking at a GPS, because I could have whipped, I did whip out my phone and look at my GPS. It didn't tell me how to get where I was trying to go. I had no idea. So, again, it was my dream car. So it was fully loaded with everything. I had Bluetooth. I called my mom. My mom grew up in Moncton. She guided me out of those subdivisions because I was having a panic attack of my life. I was freaking out, crying. I was lost. I was lost in Moncton. Okay? It can happen. Yes. So, did that fear stay in me? I, I'm not sure. That's not my point. I thought it was just an example that I can get lost. You know, because they say that because I make enough money, these things are somehow all going away. So today, again, I can't do the same things over and over. I So I'm not the only person that's like that. There's other people. And they don't, you know, they try to rationalize it in their head because nobody wants the stigma of being mentally ill. Not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just that for many, many years, somehow society told us we were freaks and weirdos. I happen to like being a freak and a weirdo, but, you know, that's me. I mean, look at my lips. Aren't I gorgeous? And um, this lipstick will be mentioned later on in the makeup part that if you don't want to listen, I won't make up for. Don't tune into. Just stop listening when you get to makeup. So, I forgot. Other examples of people that, again, are suffering in silence. Because maybe you're seeing yourself in these examples. And if you do see yourself or you see someone that you love, please... Try to get them help. If you don't know how to get them help, message me. And I, I have ideas and resources and whatnot. So, yes, you drive the same way to work every day. But let's say construction happens. Because let's face it, it's Moncton, it's New Brunswick. Half our roads are crap. There's going to be construction at one point. Then. So there's construction on your favorite route to work. What are you going to do? Now, normal people, or I shouldn't say normal, but people who do not have OCD and a part that it's a problem in their life will take an alternate route. And usually there are signs to tell you what the detour is and all you got to do is follow them. Some people can't do that. When you have OCD at this level, you're stuck. You're screwed. You can't go to work. And then you call in sick, and then if you call in sick more than 10 times because you work in a call center, then you get fired and uh, kind of whatever. My point is, is that there's people that go through that every day. There's people that have to eat the exact same meal plan all week long, like Mondays, whatever, Tuesdays, whatever. And then something happens that, you know, the more that you get into it, the more... You get caught in the routine of doing the exact same thing. And the further you go along, it's like you're fueling your own fire and you're making yourself worse. So that's why I'm saying if you recognize yourself or recognize someone, a friend or someone that you love, you know, talk to them, ask questions, you know, try to get them help. Because it's hell living in that, by the way. Um, again... Because most of the comments, like the food part, I, I, I can talk to this on a personal level because I have a friend that, that lives in, in that area. So they started off having the same meal plan and then it started off that it was item specific. And their favorite brand of something was no longer on the market. They had a total meltdown. Because it disrupted so much. So that is part of OCD, but it's the part of OCD that we don't see. It's the part that they don't put in TV shows. It's the part they don't put in movies, but it exists. And in my case, when I was working, my last job, 
before I stopped, was a call center. And I worked from 2 in the afternoon to 10 at night. And it was winter. It was that year where we had like a snowstorm every three days. So I had my routine. And one day, this one particular day, and that's when, you know, I was talking to my mother about it. And she really clued in that, you know, I was really not okay and I wasn't going down the right path. Story for another day. My story is that the time that I wanted to leave to go to my job, because I'm always early, if I can help it. That time, the plowman had not come to clear our driveway. So I couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't go to work. My time frame had passed. Now, that time frame was early enough that by the time that the plowman actually did come and plow the driveway, I still would have had plenty of time to get in my car, drive myself to work, be on time, and finish my shift. However, the fact that my routine was disrupted by that upset me so much on the inside that I couldn't function. I couldn't go to work. I cried, and I kept trying to rationalize it, and my mother kept going, like, just get in your car and go to work. Like, your driveway's plowed now. And I was just like... I can't. It ain't happening. One, I'm feeling better. Other than the fact that this thing with social development, if I did not have my DBT skills, I would be in such a crisis that my life would be over. However, my DBT skills... Sorry. However, my DBT skills are there enough that I can just leave it aside, you know, let it go. Elsa's singing back there. Let it go. And the people that are helping me, they're going to take care of it. We'll figure things out and we'll deal with it when it happens. Now, that's a huge thing for me. Therefore, I feel better about myself. And I want to present how I feel. So that's why makeup to me is important. It can be to other people, okay? It's not a bad thing. Now, so they're all mad at me because I bought some makeup, whatever. And the part at the end where I talk about it, I'm explaining why I didn't spend all that much money. As they think, because I'm pretty sure they watch this, which is fine. Go for it. I don't care. But not my point. So today, because the cow's going to be here like any second, um, I can't go to group on the bus. Because the bus schedule at 11, 11 Main for this week is altered because they are fixing the bus stop for that stupid thing that we don't need because when the tour buses come and I know this because one of the bus drivers is my friend he's been my friend for years and years from when I took the bus before yeah I've been doing this for a while uh, anyway he explained to me that the city decided that those parkings on the side where all the bus people get off and exchange buses. That's where the tour buses are going to park when there's going to be an event at the new event center. Tour buses are going to take priority over city buses. So I'm going to say it. I'm going to sound like Kanye West here, except I'm not going off key. The mayor doesn't care about poor people. She just wants us to like go away. Go hide somewhere else. We ain't going nowhere, okay? Mostly because we can't afford to get anywhere. But my point is, is that they're fixing all of that bus terminal exchange things because they realized, or maybe the bus drivers themselves told them it was ridiculous, that there isn't enough exchange part with the tour buses are going to be there because we're going to end up, you know, getting off and off the buses in the middle of the street. And as for the handicapped buses where people are in wheelchairs or have walkers or the people with strollers and children... You know, taking that step down that's like a foot down when you're, you know, not walking onto a sidewalk is dangerous and hard. So my point is, they're fixing that. And the bus that I take, which is the Green Line, which is the only bus I know and comfortable at taking. If I need to go anywhere else where there's an other bus other than the 51, I don't go. I'm not there yet. I can't. I will arrange it to be on a day where Megan can drive me. If not, like, you know, 
World War X is in my head. So I don't understand the bus schedule. Now I can look at it. I've, I've read it, you know, every half an hour or something, whatever. And then there's something about Weldon Street. <clears throat> I can't. I mean, it sounds simple to everybody else. It sounds simple to my mom. And then she heard the panic in my voice when I was trying to explain to her that it ain't kind of happening. The panic's here right now. But so did my work at mental health and she completely gets it. So for this week, they're going to pay me a cab to get there because like, don't, I don't need the extra anxiety, obviously, because there's other things going on. And I'm trying to, you know, not go to bad places. So that is why OCD is a problem, how it can affect your life to the point that it stops you from doing everyday things, Mr. Social Development people. All right. Just because money has nothing to do with it. 